So to start with, like, what is cloud? Uh, you guys are aware of it. Um, it's a social measurement, uh, social influence measurement company. Uh, users register on cloud.com. And from registered users, we collect data, uh, the publicly available data, and try to understand uh, what's going on on the social network. And um, uh, in that, we also like generate the cloud score. But, Additionally, we also try to uh, compute the topics that they are interested in, the topics that they are expert in in these networks, uh, and uh, show that to the users. On top of this, we also recommend content for users to share on social media. So uh, we have a collect content discovery stream based on uh, close to some 10,000 topics. Uh, Additionally, when uh, users are uh, like trying to share content, we also uh, set, uh, suggest to them like friends of the time to post that uh, so that they can uh, maximize the reach uh, to their audience. So, for example, this is uh, typically a uh, one profile uh, on cloud.com. You come here, and then this is the content that you see for uh, senior science. Uh, you're shown like your level of expertise. On the topic across uh, six uh, social networks. So we collect data from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and uh, Google Plus and Wikipedia to understand uh, the user's experience. Uh, and uh, we also show like the recommended experts on that particular topic. So now suppose you want to share a content from this uh, place. We uh, can go ahead and schedule your uh, publishing time. So either you can publish instantly, or also we suggest the optimal times so you can reach out to your audience uh, uh, in a more effective way. Uh, so the typical motivation uh, here is that the brands, for example, want to maximize their reach to uh, their customers. <laughs> Uh, or the celebrities, for example, want to maximize their reach to different, uh, to, to their maximum to their fans, uh, and uh, it's very important for them to know uh, what's like the, the perfect time that, that uh, their audience is reacting the most and can see their messages. But so uh, a lot of research has been done in the past, uh, but in a very info, uh, like very high level kind of research. And uh, they have focused mostly on aggregated stats for each uh, different cities or different networks. So, for example, when you take New York or San Francisco and you try to aggregate data for thousands of users, it's suddenly very easy to uh, understand what's going on in that network. Uh, but uh, we want to go in a more systematic way and understand what goes in each user's uh, network and see how. Uh, we can, uh, how we can give them a more optimized schedule. Uh, so some of the primary challenge here is the lack of some open data set. Uh, we really can't benchmark uh, against any industry solution right now. Like Facebook or Twitter doesn't really recommend any time uh, for users. Uh, also, the, the data sparsity is a big challenge. Of course, when we talk about aggregated level for cities, uh, we can certainly get a lot more data, but when we're talking about individual users, uh, the data is uh, certainly very sparse and very location specific. Also, each user has a very unique audience. So, for example, uh, take an example of this user. He has say, 50 percent of his friends in the US, and then he has three time zones. Uh, of the rest of the 50 percent of his audience, is like a huge distribution across different. Countries. So when this user wants to find the optimal time to say uh, maximize their ad campaign in, in, in Brazil or in US or in Europe or in Asia, uh, they really have to know what's going on in that particular audience profile. Uh, and so that's why we look into uh, this problem. Uh, so the problem setting for us is uh, 
that why use another social network you might find the best time to post a message uh, so that you can maximize the probability of uh, receiving the audience reaction. Uh, we, for this study, we consider only replies, retweets, favorites, like the typical actions on social media. We uh, think of the, uh, the weekly audience reactions as a cyclical thing, uh, starting from Monday, uh, 00 hours. We distribute that in 15 minute buckets. So you can even think like this assumption, we still have for each single user, we have 700 buckets to figure out. Uh, close to 700 buckets uh, to understand when their reaction is most, when their audience is reacting most to them. Uh, this is a uh, system overview for uh, how we uh, run our pipelines at Cloud. Uh, when a user comes in, they give us uh, tokens to go and collect uh, public data from the social APIs. Uh, we, uh, and we also collect public data from uh, Kimmy, uh, which is the uh, data stream. Uh, so after the collection is done, we pass the data into more uh, into normalized uh, data structure within the company. So this is more like transformation to a normalized uh, structure using protocols. Uh, so now once the, this part of the pipeline is uh, done, we build some basic building blocks to solve the problem. So we uh, look at it for user, we build a creation profile to understand uh, when, uh, what are the times that they typically post the messages. We also look at the reaction profile for a user. Uh, so trying to understand that in a weekly 700 bucket option, what are the times that they mostly uh, react to the people's post. Uh, this helps us in understanding their typical behavior patterns and how we can use that as a uh, as a understanding to build a reaction graph for the other user. So think of my friend's reaction profile. Uh, we will like to understand when he reacts. Then for me, when we want to go ahead and calculate, like generate the uh, best time, we will look at his reaction profile uh, and, and predict for the the best time for me to post. So. Using that, we build a post to reaction profile. Uh, it is more like a probability distribution of when your audience is most likely to uh, react. Uh, we also use the user graph as, as I just talked now, like understanding my friends' reactions uh, as we go through this. Uh, a big part of our work has been opening up a large data set so we can, uh, uh, like, Go ahead and, and academia can use uh, this data set to come up with more different solutions and benchmark against our solutions. Uh, different uh, models, for example, can be really helpful in this problem. We have uh, made some 100.4 million plus Facebook posts uh, as open data. Uh, they have more than a billion data set, a billion reactions. Uh, and the data sets has user ID, uh, the actor ID. So for you posting, we have the friend's user ID and the post ID part, uh, and the post timestamp. All the IDs have been uh, anonymized and fingerprinted, and the timestamps are slightly perturbed, but within the framework of uh, 15 minute buckets. Uh, so uh, they are uh, good for, for reproducing, for example, this work. So we want to build some intuition around the data and, and to, before we build the solution, we want to see how audiences typically react. So for example, are their behavior the same across different networks? So for example, do users on Twitter behave the same way as Twitter users on Facebook? Uh, or does uh, users in San Francisco react the same way as users in uh, New York or Tokyo or London? Uh, so we plot the, the fraction of uh, reactions that users typically get on a uh, social network. So you can see that uh, the, the rate of react, the fraction of the, re the reactions that we get gets over in 24 hours. It's a very short time cycle. Uh, of that, uh, the, on Twitter, the 50 percent of reactions are received in the first 24 minutes. 
Uh, so for, for brands and celebrities who want to reach out to their uh, audience, it's really important that, that they know when these audiences are reacting and they can uh, figure out the best time for their brand events. Uh, for Facebook, the, the uh, reaction times is like to reduce fifty percent fraction is almost four x at uh, more than one and a half hour. Uh, we also analyze the post to reaction uh, on the basis of topic of content. So, for example, we see how people react to politics, how people react to science, and uh, say food and uh, drinks and fashion. So, we see that for politics. Again, the, uh, the, the rate of uh, reactions is much higher, people react much faster, uh, while content around food and drinks uh, are much slower and people consume that over a longer period of time. We also see that uh, actor interview plays a uh, very important role here. So, what we mean by actor interview is like the number of friends you have. On Facebook, the number of followers you have on Twitter. Uh, we see a uh, distinct uh, difference uh, when the active connectivity count, for example, goes to more than a million users. So, typically for brands or uh, celebrities, uh, the reaction is very different than typical users with uh, connectivity between, say, 100 and 100,000. 100,000 is pushing it a bit, but uh, on the other uh, Larger, uh, on the tail end of the user distribution, we see very different behavior. We also look at the audience behavior on a per network basis. So, for example, this is a reaction target for Twitter and Facebook. So we see that Twitter has two distinct peaks uh, one at, in the morning and then one uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, so, this is very typical, and we can expect this. Say people are going to work, they are commuting, they are checking Twitter, and even on their way back home, there is a uh, people are checking Twitter. But, but Facebook shows a much more uh, continued usage throughout the day, and that changes a lot on uh, how you can use this to your benefit. Uh, we also plot the correlation and similarity of user behavior uh, for users on Twitter and Facebook. So, why we do see that the correlation between uh, the actions is uh, same, but the but the the behavior is very dissimilar. So essentially, what this tells us is that we need different uh, schedules on different networks. We cannot have just one single schedule for all the networks. We also look at audience behavior by location. Uh, so this is a very interesting graph, which uh, for say for Twitter, for example, you see the peaks. Uh, but you also see that between San Francisco and New York, there is almost like an hour uh, ahead where San Francisco starts to react on Twitter. Of course, the times have been normalized to reach uh, time zones. Uh, so, we uh, actually looked up uh, some other study, and uh, uh, there has been reports that, for example, San Francisco wakes up like an hour earlier than New York. So, uh, if, if your target is, for example, Twitter audience, you need a different schedule, and if your target audience is New York, you need a different schedule, and so on. Uh, just go on to validate the hypothesis behind the study. Um, for the rest of the talk, my colleague will uh, follow up with you. <coughs> the questions now for the starting done or will you? Oh, right. Okay, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah, if you have a simple question. No. So, what do you remember about, say, I'm the, I'm the guy, I'm getting on the cloud and want to connect to the cloud. What do you remember about me? Uh, all other Facebook information, my credentials for logging into Facebook. How do you? How do you read the data on Facebook and the Twitter and things like that? What do you remember about me? Oh, so it's so only the so perspective on concerned that okay, I'm giving away to you the information you have all that content, right? Sure, sure. So the question is uh, uh, how do we uh, collect and store the uh, person's private information uh, from the different social networks? So typically it's the OAuth exchange process. 
uh, give us the OAuth token as a typical uh, Facebook sign up for any apps that you would have. And then, uh, based on that permission settings, we go and collect the data. Cloud analyzes data on the last 90 day window, so we keep purging uh, data after 90 days. And during that 90 days, we are mostly concerned with, uh, for example, the metadata information. So I didn't cover a lot of the system details. Uh, I can go back. So. Well, that's okay. So, okay. Yeah. so in terms of when we are talking about the passing, that's when we keep the, for example, the message ID uh, and the metadata on the app. So the timestamp and how many and how many reactions were on that message, for example. Uh, that helps us understand the, the next product, all the other products that we're building on that information. And from Twitter again, it's all public data. So when you're saying like social media posts, are you just focusing on the organic content or the ads uh, side of it, the paid uh, ads? Uh, we don't distinguish between uh, user messages. So for us, like any post that's coming in through the data source, for example, being sponsored or otherwise, still the same thing. I mean, it probably is a good idea for brands to benchmark the sponsored post and see if they could have improved if they would follow our prescribed times, for example. Uh, but we don't distinguish anything like uh, the market was sponsored or not. I mean, even on Facebook, like the paid uh, ads on Facebook? You... We, we don't distinguish anything. No. Yeah, it's all a simple like, message. Uh, uh, basically, you don't use the Facebook page uh, post, you only use the normal people's uh, Facebook post. Okay. Yes. Okay, one question. So, are you going to talk about the technical stack that you use to do the work on the technical data? I'm sorry, I think that's it. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, so, uh, for the first uh, pipeline is. Uh, the building blocks of creation profile and reactive profile uh, is based on hype. Uh, we uh, uh, pass some data and store it using protocols, and from here we have hype pipelines. Uh, for custom uh, functionalities that we need to build, for example, uh, transforming the time zone and stuff like that, uh, we uh, build them using Java classes and load that using Java videos. Uh, on hype. And once the data is prepared, we uh, load it to each base and uh, our API serves data from those base clusters. So it's uh, from collection to parsing and, and serving its uh, hive uh, and uh, each base and Hadoop. So that's a back process? Yeah, it's running as a back process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? Okay, thank you. So probably I'll just uh, finish the, uh, the last part of the, this presentation. So uh, I think Frankie just mentioned a lot of factors to affect the audience with reaction behaviors. So uh, I mentioned uh, uh, location is one of the factors. The, uh, just now we showed, uh, you can see the different cities where you have the different uh, reaction behavior. Now we also brought the community and relations across the uh, different major cities and uh, in different networks. Basically, you can see from this map for uh, like San Francisco and New York. The users, if we visit the same cities, they start to share very similar the reaction behaviors. But we probably look at the Tokyo and London, they are also very similar, but maybe less compared to similar schools in New York. Probably maybe because the, the friends network in the, the US cities are already close, so probably they have shared very similar uh, reaction behaviors. And we also, uh, we also uh, brought the uh, other topics will affect the uh, uh, audience behavior, and then topics will be used are our internal topic system to classify the, the posts and the different topics. So, for example, we like the uh, finance topics, politics, politics, and science topics. So, you can see from this graph, uh, generally, uh, we can see some, some of the uh, big, uh, big difference uh, between the topics, but generally, it uh, looks very similar. It seems uh, the topics that is not made better with better uh, uh, relations. Basically, what I'm seeing here is when I post something about politics, that's the reaction of my, the likes I got it, 
that's that's how it is. Oh uh, yes, this reaction means because it's the likes and comments and then it goes to you know, all the people you can And the likes of likes, like if somebody commented, if somebody didn't like it in the comments, you know, um, check the comments and like the same, and all check as the reactions basically. So, and now we come to the how we calculate the personalized uh, schedules. So, uh, just like the uh, fingerprints of everybody, so all different. So, as shown in the previous slides, the uh, effect of the feathers. And then, we, how we uh, calculate the personalized uh, schedules. So, just a bit, uh, let's come back a little bit. Then, we just want to uh, simplify the, what will be uh, posting and reacting behaviors. So, basically, as the offer, I do something, and then all my friends are uh, listening. For example, I'm A, and then I post something, and then all my friends B will be seeing what I post. And then maybe some of the friends will do something and take the reactions to me, like a big zero reaction to me. But uh, this, this is more important, this is the one first degree uh, networks around me. And we can take a further uh, further look at this second degree. For example, the, my friend maybe he may also see the post from all the other friends, all these friends, those this is the second degree. And then uh, to calculate the schedules, we want to uh, answer several questions. And then first, we basically want to know uh, when I when a user A create a post, and then uh, when will the uh, specific audience B react to the post created by A. So and then the last uh, question will be for you to answer what's the probability your friend will react to your post. So uh, okay, before uh, we introduce our schedules, we need to. Uh, Introduce some uh, locations here. So, first is about the pretty post. Basically, uh, the domain by the seeds is it, it is an uh, aggregated uh, number of posts created by the user. So, because as we showed before, you say we look at the last 90 days data. So, it's an aggregated number in the, uh, in the different type of it. And then, we also use uh, another location to visible the post. Basically, it's an aggregate number of posts uh, visible to one user. And then, it's a uh, reaction for reactions. And then it's a uh, number of reactions by the user. Um, and the other one is called the uh, delayed self reactions. Uh, because of as we see, uh, uh, the momentum for Twitter or Facebook, the, your the reaction to a post will really also have a, it's not immediate reaction, they also have a delayed. So to uh, more accurate uh, model the reactions, we use the uh, delayed self reactions. And then that means uh, it's a uh, uh, number of reactions generated by the user in the time, in the time interval D. So to calculate uh, this uh, delayed reaction, we just use some of the convolution functions to uh, find the convolution function of the reactions. And then the uh, last our goal is want to calculate and estimate the audience reactions for the users. And now to get the uh, audience with number of reactions, we can get the uh, uh, post schedules. So just start from the very beginning uh, methods. So look at, only look at the first degree reactions. So then basically uh, when I say something to you, and then uh, I want to know how much reaction we can get. So basically, so it's very simple. We just uh, we because from the history, we already know the, how many posts you are you created, and then uh, from this history, and also we we know the, uh, your friends how we they will get reacted to you. We just have seen uh, all the posts you create, uh, you created, your friends will get reacted to you. So basically, just need to sum up all the together, and then based on this, you can calculate the schedules. But uh, of course, it's uh, not enough. It, because uh, uh, you do something, as long as your friends will, will react to you. So, uh, to simplify uh, this, I know probably a lot of factors will affect your uh, friends' behaviors, but uh, only we, we only should uh, simplify this problem with study. We only look at the second degree uh, second degree effect. Basically, uh, your friend will always see your post, but he will see the other, his other friends' post. So, uh, so that's how we can uh, answer the first for the questions. What's the probability of your friends will react to your post? So we treat uh, uh, your friends the visible uh, number of posts will be just a uh, linear linear sum up of all these friends' uh, uh, posts, created posts with uh, is the linear equations. And then uh, based on that, we treat as the bonerate uh, reactions. If they will either react to one post or not react. So the expected uh, number of uh, Reactions for the for the user and time of t so we uh, can just calculate like this. The Q is uh, uh, divided by all these posts uh, seed, 
and then it's somehow over here. So basically it means that the C models tells you less than a probability you actually need. So it's yeah. Uh, so but and then they take further and then they take further step on that. We just now we only consider the all the friends to be equally. So it's the uh, it's like some power as well. I'm waiting to I'm waiting way to do the uh, formations, but actually it's not that true, right? So basically you from your experience you know your close friends may be have more chance to match your close. So intuitively you want to uh as a weighting to the to your friends. So uh, how we calculate the weightings? Basically we can just look at, also look at uh, your histories. So we can see how uh, uh what's uh, uh how the engagement between you and your friend for, for different events. So across a close when we respond to your folks more often than the than the others. So and then basically we can uh from uh, uh we can view the reaction plot of for your friends and then uh, <coughs> and then for low body we can calculate the probability to get the rates. Uh so yeah. So let's look at the uh, real examples of the of the, all these uh, different schedule real life. From here, um Basically, this line is the uh, is the post reaction filter. We can just really see, view it as a convolution function, and then the the dot green dot dots line is to be the aggregated reactions to, towards your from your friends, and then the red line is the one one point, the first degree weighted, and then the blue line is the uh, second degree weighted. So we can see the uh, uh, because the first degree weighted uh, basically is somehow the final convolution function on the reaction. Accurate reaction, so it's quite similar like the uh, accurate reactions. But the second way you consider your is friends or friends. So basically, so we somehow if the, your friends will see more the post and the time will be have less uh, probability to get to you. Uh, finally, we'll come, I'll come to the uh, how to how we do the evaluations. So because of it's the uh, no color matches to do evaluations problem, so we decide our own the matches for the reaction game. So simply, you can think about it. Uh, Every you can make it because for each each work, uh, for each people, we can calculate the average response rate for for the course. But probably uh, based on the, our schedules, maybe some and I know recommend the recommend the post uh, bucket. You can get more the reaction gain compared with the average. So we say this is reaction gain the matches. So uh, all this data will be uh, scheduled to be evaluated on the 56 days of unseen data. Will be trained on about, about the 60 days data, and then be covered around the upon the upon five million active users. And then we have so also defined some baseline. So uh, the, this baseline method we also always recommend by the uh, some other hosts. So it's just going to be the most frequent used. Uh, uh, schedules basically you can just see the uh, accurate all the not all users together to see what they what time they do the repost. And the other one is the uh, accurate first degree. So basically these two baseline will be not the uh, personalized, just globalized uh, schedules. So uh, you can see uh, this is the for Facebook, the other one is for Twitter. The best one uh, for Facebook we can see is about to get the best uh, post time get has a 70% of reaction gain. And then uh, this is for the first degree, and then uh, also uh, the second one will be the uh, yeah the, the, first, the first one will be the first degree weighted the schedule, and then the second one will be the first degree. And then it looks like the second degree is somehow is close to the a bit better than the low points. And then for theta, we see the last uh, reaction rate about the four percent. So uh, yeah. So finally, we want to uh, just mention some of our possible future works. And yeah, you can see uh, right now we're just using the, in this time, we probably use memory speed, it's quite simple. And then uh, just look at uh, uh, using the global reaction game intervention, probably we can do some personalized intervention. And then the second degree model is, uh, is quite simple right now, probably a bit more to sophisticated. And then uh, the topic of where is uh, another direction we can uh, explore. Uh, also, you might only uh, look at the uh, text content, and then probably you can also look at uh, how to recommend the uh, best posting time for photo and then videos. And uh, we can also uh, integrate more networks and symbols. So, yeah, this is the conclusion part. So, basically, this is the uh, 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 u
And this one is uh, published in this year's uh, KDP's conference. Uh, let's say if I, in, in a day I put it there, I, I post 10 posts of technical stuff. And I got two, two likes each. Mm -hmm. So it's very like to say. Yeah. And in one day, the same day, I put one picture and I got 300 likes. So, mm -hmm. how you, your software or your self balance this? Yes, as you say, the day actually, the uh, uh, most people actually is supposed to be a way is fast and then they're all fighting them. So, what we do is we using some accurate click rates. We aggregate uh, the all the users uh, posting the in the last 60 days and then for each time of week. So generally, for each time again, it will be reflects your view of the state, the reaction behaviors. You don't have any metric to say, okay, this was a light from a cell phone or from... Um, uh, no doubt, you don't consider that now, yeah. But that's the other suggestion. Yeah. Uh, do you use the Facebook pixel or do you have like a, your own pixel or like matching both? Like how do you aggregate that? Where, where do you get the data from? Oh yeah, so you know, all these data come from our uh, cloud logistics users. The cloud user will give our access to them to plot their post, Facebook post. Yeah. Okay, so that's like through uh, Facebook API or their Facebook? Yeah, Facebook API. So um, I'd like to thank you first for sharing, that's very interesting topic. And uh, um, I also have the same questions, uh, maybe some other have like a, a, do you collect those data in your own system uh, consistently like with the event happening at the real time or you batch a process data into your system from Facebook and Twitter? Uh, probably, I think I'll ask again this question. Uh, so for Twitter, uh, we get the data from, uh, it's a complete data, I mean, and we collect the encoding data from Twitter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we use the clip data source, the industry standard. So that streams the data to us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, push. That's a push model. Mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, we have to actively go and collect. Uh, so that's a more like a pooling model, and uh, we typically refresh uh, in the seventy-two hour cycle. So, so like, uh, did you notice there is a lack, of, like time in difference, of, like Twitter and Facebook when the event happening, and the data come to your uh, side? Your uh, company database or whatever in your site will have uh, some delay? Uh, even if there is delay, and, and the data collection has delays, but uh, the response from Facebook API has the metadata for us to uh, do the analysis. So, in the, in the API response that we get from Facebook uh, APIs, that has the message timestamps and the reaction timestamps accurately to at the time that we are operating. So, so our results are uh, oblivious to when we collected the data. Thank you. And this collection is a uh, only based on the first layer of uh, connection or the even the uh, second degree of uh, connection of the one in the On Facebook, the uh, second degree connection uh, doesn't happen. Uh, so we uh, give second degree uh, skills for the because it's a Twitter uh, is like more open graph. Uh, so we can make the connection to the apart. How many users do you have? Um, it's a great question. So uh, it's like a great public data idea. So uh, on that we focus on analysis on like the cloud score that we generate every day is for 700 million plus users. And uh, cloud topics that we generate every day. So it's like you know what topics are users interested in and what their expertise is. That's far close to four hundred million users. Do you have a, a sign in on your on your server? So these are the public data. Uh, and then, uh, for for example, for personalized schedule, it's for the registered users, uh, which is close to a million. Uh, in order of million. A million yeah. users. Yeah. But the effects it depends on the on the history data. Maybe some active users, maybe the top is currently better, but it's not. Where do you host this Amazon or you host yourself? Internal process. So um, I'm also like interested in um, like your research on different areas and what you're sharing that interesting. But I also like to know what is uh, do you track those kind of uh, with the post? Do you track a thread like one topic and have problems that because post A, post and B react and then it, uh, 
the bus back and did those kind of problems with that. And then uh, if you analyze those kind of things back, and also some of them uh, when the topic happened is it, it is put in like bigger environment. For example, if like uh, some like school shooting happened, probably most not topics, but uh, weapon control or like uh, gun control. And if there's some like tsunami happening in Japan, probably here the, uh, like a uh, environmental like uh, topic comes on. So when you analyze those like uh, certain uh, things happened in the society to influence the topic to uh, those kind of stuff. Oh yes. So I understand basically your question the one whether we analyze the, uh, some popular topics and then how the uh, influence on the reaction behaviors, right? So yeah, as we showed before, we say that uh, we don't analyze only for the popular topics. We we'll only analyze the general topics now and science uh, questions. We see that it seems that it's not it's not an important factors, but what's great as we say is some uh, some popular topics and some happen topics maybe. We will definitely have to like, what yes. is happening? What is that uh, kind of like, uh, impact of those kind of like uh, reach out, whatever, the social posting the topic goes up? This, you also analyze those, right? Uh, yes, actually, we do have some, uh, actually, in our products, we all we, we do show the, uh, the trend of the hot topics. Mm -hmm. If we come out, we do see a lot of posts on them, on that topics. Yeah, we do do some analysis on this. But for this study, we don't uh, do that. For the, uh, for the user, do you group them into different type of input, uh, like uh, profiling and behavior groups? So, because some people, like SS Intellect constantly, some people do not very frequently like, yes. uh, open their like, uh, uh, Facebook or Twitter like that. And somebody probably just check them less than a, a couple of days. And uh, do you differentiate those people in a different group or you just mix them all together? Uh, in our uh, general products, we don't differentiate them, but uh, in this study, we only really focus on active users. We only sample on active users. Well, well the, the data we saw there is just for one user, right? No, this is uh, which, uh, which, which one? Uh, yeah, so, we regard my, my post, right? Yeah, this is uh, your personalized schedule. Yeah, you yes, my yeah, post. Yeah. personalized schedules, yeah. So if your audience is not reacting, uh, then then you have some crappy recommendations for you. So your business is to tell me where the best time I can put advertise on, on yeah. my on my media. Uh, yeah. Because the service you're you're saying there's a bunch of posts of the, but this one is it's kind of unique. Yeah. They give you the the when you should post something. It, it's not for it's not agreeing. Really. It's personalized. So if you're it, it's every user has a unique audience and, and the schedule is unique to that user. This question is on managing the user identities. So besides user, users' identities across the network, so besides relying on the user to spell their Twitter and Facebook IDs, do you map the IDs from different users? Uh, yeah. uh, whenever a user registers, if they connect multiple networks to one. Cloud ID, then that's the mapping file we have. We don't do anything else. So we try to understand when we reach like a breaking point, when we get more visibility. Like when you when you reach a certain likes within a time frame, and then you get more visibility on Facebook. Do you understand? So like going viral or something? Yeah, we're trying to, to understand where the breaking points were actually like. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I see your question. No, we don't, we don't uh, take oh, that right. because we really don't have any way to take that and get it in the <laughs> But we can collect that data. So we don't have access to that data. One more question. Any reason we don't do LinkedIn? Uh, just their APIs. Like, uh, it's not very helpful for us. It's similar to Facebook. Uh, they have strict uh, limitations on. Model that you are uh, using for the Yes, uh, that's a prediction model that's correct. I am not sure if that Facebook model is right. So, how do you get access to Facebook or APR? 
Have you started to write the think about now? Okay, now I wanna you give me your books and I do it for you. All the time, the middle of the night, so I don't have to post myself. It will be a robot that's both for me. Yeah, you can schedule it. Okay, you can yeah, on the side you can yeah, on the side you can schedule it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, uh, when you write when you try to go and schedule, that's when the recommendation comes in. We have a certain threshold uh, for how many how many posts uh, do I need to make before your personalized schedule actually becomes um, somewhat more uh, accurate. Uh, we don't we don't have these thresholds now, uh, honestly, but uh, probably we need to. Yeah, uh, I cannot answer your question now. Probably need to do more uh, study on this. Yeah, but at least for this. Uh, yeah, it's very important most of users when it too sparse on the data is uh, maybe several time of has some data, but yeah, that's a good question. So is there any minimum number of users or connections that you have for a for a for a user basically you should have at least hundred uh, connections something like that? No. So maybe less or maybe two uh your post needs to get at least one recommendation one reaction. Yeah. I believe in a theory that when you like reach a certain amount of like uh like like audience, then we post it and then like make it trending and then have a second effect and then we post it. Do you like propose your uh audience like a uh, end user to do that to reach the maximum like as a marketing strategy to get the maximum uh, exposure this way? Yeah, we oh, need to we post. Just, we post it. Yeah, we post. We don't. Uh, our content discover. I think you're talking more about the content itself, not the time to post. But what content should do we recommend them to post? Yes, as a as a like topic of graph, we do that again. And we the don't. Uh, our content discovery stream is not. I. I think we, we are more organic and try to see like what's more recent. Mm -hmm. So if the content, the original content publication timestamp is like long before, then I I think the algorithm act, like will drop it. But we don't have any active recommendations to either in post or not post. I think it's very organic. Like if a post becomes important again in social media, we'll try to. What happened with my post that I did a month ago and my grandmother very Facebook, she saw it like a month after. What happened with the data? Is it get new trend? What how how the reaction so you keep you keep the data for like 90 days you said? But the fraction of messages that we get like is almost in 24 hours, so I'd say that statistically we are not going to get any problems with Okay, take one last question. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.